Hello guys, thank you very much for joining in. We're going to be starting out with this chapter called Insurance Companies and Pension Fund. In this quick summary, I'm not going to touch the calculation part. There is a separate video for it. I'm going to only focus on the theoretical part of this chapter. From the exam perspective, you can expect one question from this chapter, which is theory. Okay. In the past, they've also asked one additional question, which is a calculation based question. This calculation based question is nothing but your premium break even premium calculation. Let us go into the details about this chapter. So insurance first part is only about insurance. The second module is, is about pension funds. Okay. Let us first talk, talk about insurance. So insurance companies, they will compensate you if there is a specific loss event that has happened to you. Basically any loss that you're facing insurance companies ideally should compensate you for that particular thing. Okay. Now insurance is bifurcated into three parts. Life insurance, property and casualty and health. Let us first talk about the life insurance. So life insurance, like for example, I'm taking life insurance for my life coverage. So if anything happens to me, okay, mostly it's the natural death or a death by accident or anything. It is generally covered and the insurance company will pay a, a sum a short amount to my nominees. Okay. So it is basically the beneficiary of the customer. He who will get the amount on the natural death of that particular country. natural death is an example it can be accidental death also but the debt has should happen generally under the policy term okay suppose you have taken a policy for next 30 years the debt should happen within that particular term now coverage can also be taken for accidental related death or suppose uh, physical disability all of these things are add-on let us go into the first product that we generally see for life insurance which is important which is called as term life insurance first a product okay now term life insurance means the insurance company is going to cover you for a particular term that is a fixed period your premium is also fixed from this start okay if you're going to die within that particular term insurance company will pay you the amount if you do not die if you just survive the term there will be no payment in this case okay so you will only get money if you die particular in within that particular period of time when the insurance companies calculate the premium they take into account the mortality table which is a further part of the chapter this mortality table is nothing but telling you what is the probability of the person dying okay and basis that your premium is actually decided the second version okay with this within this life insurance in the endowment fund so you will find a lot of these uh, life insurance companies they have an endowment product where if suppose the customer dies within the particular term he will get the sum assured but if he suppose survives okay then he will get a particular sum assured that means whatever money he had invested he will get a slight return the money is again ba returned back and slightly higher return also so in this case in this case effectively what we are doing is okay it's basically an insurance contract where the time is mentioned okay if the policy holder dies before maturity there will be a payout say it is sum assured is given to you Okay, but in this case, what is also happening that if you suppose do not die within that particular period of time, you get a slightly, uh, you get your money back with some uh, interest or some return. Okay, uh, there is also variation of with profit. Now, in this case, if the insurance companies are doing good, then they will get a slightly higher payout. That means they are participating on the growth of the insurance company. That is why the name is with profit endowment. Fund. The other would be unit link, which is also called as ULIP in India, unit link insurance product where you're, when you're making the payment, some portion is going towards coverage of your life. Some portion is basically getting invested in the market. So on the basis of your chosen asset, if that investment performance is good, the final amount that you're going to get is also going to be good. That is being covered over here. The next part is group insurance, which generally a lot of corporates give. Okay, to their employees. So the moment you become a part of that corporate, automatically you are eligible for that group insurance. Now, in this case, the best part is that the group insure in group insurance, you don't have to do any medical or anything. If you go and do a normal retail product, there's going to be a lot of uh, checks that you'll have to take. But in a group insurance, then all of these things are not done. So examinations are not effectively taken into consideration. Now, why would insurance company give such product? Because you're doing a coverage to a very big customer, pool of customers. The pool of pooling of risk, large number of people, you're averaging out. So you're give you're taking some amount of good risk. That means customers who are healthy and also some amount of bad risk. Customers who are health is not good. So you're averaging out on the overall pool. That is what the product talks about. Are you ready to ace the financial risk management exam? I know clearing FRM is tough and to ease out your journey for preparing for the exam. Our crash course will help you. Because in our crash course, we have a concise and crisp content covering the entire Swedish book. 
everything given in the book and this crash course will give you the edge to pass the FRM exam. So don't miss out. Check out the link in the description. The next is whole life insurance from the name itself. It is called as whole or permanent. That means you will give the insurance till the end. Okay, till the end of the customer's life. It will stop only upon the death. Okay, but the main point is insurance company will keep on paying the amount to the customer, but they are not sure when the death is going to happen. They are sure that the amount has to be paid to the customer, but the timing of the death is not clear and because of which they are not sure the timing of the payout which the insurance company has to pay. Okay, generally whole life insurance, uh, the premium and coverage period is very, very interesting. So let us look at this situation and also look at the diagram. So what is happening over here? That suppose there is somebody uh, which around 30 year old male. Okay, he is taking a policy of around $2 million. And the premium that you calculated is around 12,000. This is very high. Okay, so ideally what should happen? The cost of coverage is life, covering his life. When he is 30 years of old, this line represents that cost. This line represents that cost of covering the life of that customer. Cost of covering the life of that particular customer. Do you can you see you're charging twelve thousand to him from the day one every year twelve thousand, but initially the cost was very very low for the insurance company. So they were earning a surplus. So what insurance companies would ideally do? They will invest this surplus because they know as the age is going to move ahead. This customer will age and the cost of coverage for this particular customer is also going to increase. We can see over here, there will be a one point in time where the cost of covering the life of that customer is $12,000 for the insurance company and the premium that you're getting is also same. This is break even point. Okay. Also, the cost will keep on going because as the customer age, the, the cost of covering his life is also going to go up because the uh, life, uh, health insurance and all of these health related costs will also go up. But the important part is you're still charging him the same premium. So over here, you know that there's going to be an expected deficit. So what insurance companies play on? They're charging you a slightly higher amount at the start because they can invest that money and then they can cover for this deficit that they are going to face. So this entire section is talking about it only. Let us move towards the further. There are more variations of life insurance. Okay, for example, some variation of whole life insurance would be variable life insurance. Okay, where what the final amount okay, can be increased if the out uh, an asset investment that you have done is higher. So th in this variation, what is happening? You are investing some amount of portion into a investment portfolio. And if the investment portfolio outperforms your final output that you're going to get from the insurance company, that will also increase. The next is universal life insurance, where what, we, what you can also do is, if suppose you do not want the coverage of $2 million, you want to reduce it. So you can reduce the coverage and for that your premium will also go down. Okay, so you can reduce the premium in exchange of a reduced file amount. Basically, it gives you more flexibility as a customer. So these are just smaller variations which are covered in the life. Now, within the next part is the annuity contract. This is important from the exam perspective. Now, annuity is different. It is exactly opposite of life insurance because what is going to happen? Suppose I have given an annuity. My annuity starts at time zero, for example, today. Okay, I will only pay the annuity till the time the customer dies. There is a death of the customer. Okay. Now over here, the customer is basically what, what uh, customer is called as annuitant. He is basically paying a lump sum amount at time zero itself. And he's expecting some annuity payment from the insurance company. So insurance company will only pay the amount till the remaining life of that annuitant or the customer. Okay. Now some annuity can begin immediately. So I have paid a lump sum amount. The annuity is going to start now. In some cases, what might happen? The customer has paid the lump sum amount. The insurance company is going to pay to the customer after four years or five years. The annuity is going to start after four years or five years. That means it's a deferred annuity. Okay. Now annuity is a guaranteed amount which the insurance company is going to pay. Okay. Now from the insurance company's perspective, okay, what is happening? Because they're giving a minimum amount guarantee, they also need to make sure that whatever money lump sum amount that they've got, that should be invested in a proper structured way. That, that is where the payment that has to be made to the customer should be equal to the accumulation value. What is that accumulation value? Okay, it basically means that whatever amount that has been invested by the customer, it is getting invested in the market. Okay, and the total amount of the principal amount 
and the income that that principal amount is generating okay from that pool every year an fixed amount which is the annuity is taken out and paid to the customer okay that becomes your accumulated value in a very simple language let us assume and take an example over here initially the customer paid thousand dollars okay and the annuity amount is hundred for example okay so this thousand dollar will go into a pool this pool is invested into market pool in the sense it's only thousand dollar only so this thousand dollar is invested now why am i explicitly saying pool because this thousand dollar will grow it will generate some return that return is also added to the pool okay now every year at the end of every year the customer has to be paid a hundred dollars so from this pool okay the initial principal amount for plus the income the annuity is reduced suppose the income that you got was around 30 or say say around 300 for example in the first year the market was very good now the amount balance is 1300 out of this 100 is paid to the customer what is remaining 1200 this is the accumulated value of the pool this is the remaining value of the pool okay i hope everybody is clear on the concept so this accumulation value is basically available with the customer he can withdraw it prematurely also but there is going to be a penalty generally he will not withdraw he will keep it till the time because he is keep he will keep on getting annuity till the end of his life property and casualty insurance is a second form of insurance product so bifurcated what is this property insurance basically i can protect my property against some theft or some damage it can be fire earthquake all of these now premium for these kind of product depends upon what it changes every year because i'm taking an insurance for one one each year okay now the risk is that the property might face some damage now in this case insurance companies are giving policies to thousands and lakhs of uh, homeowners all of these are independent event why because somebody has taken a property insurance in chennai and somebody has taken a property insurance in mumbai there is no relationship between them right so in this case i am giving thousands and lakhs of uh, property insurance which are independent to each other so what is happening for an insurance company they have a very good confidence level that on an average how much i am going to lose so they have a high degree of confidence in the writing these number of policy because it is going to average out if there is a natural disaster for example it might happen in only one part of the country for that also they keep on tracking the geographical uh, change seismographical that means earthquake related impact or meteorological information about hurricane or typhoon all of these things so that they can identify what are the chances of that catastrophe happening and what is the severity so that will also help them to protect okay that is why this they have more and more okay confidence on the property insurance as an insurance company but when we talk about casualty insurance casualty insurance covers third party liability that means suppose there is uh, uh, I'm using a vehicle and from my vehicle somebody third party got impacted or somebody has come to my property and he uh, the slab of my property fell on him and he got injured okay that can be a third party liability so there is an impact with some third party or injury to the third party now which is coming on me as a policy holder if I have taken a liability insurance my insurance company is going to pay okay now in this case generally PNC insurance the property damage claims from natural disaster is uh, very easy but what is effectively happening the liability insurance claims are subjective to fluctuate why because it is you have no uh, way no historical data to identify whether the casualty or liability insurance is going to get triggered whether the customer will ask for a claim there is very very difficult chance so it is very challenging to predict for natural disaster even though you have some amount of machinery or something this is still natural you you can try to predict but slightly difficult okay the happening of the natural event that is what they are trying to highlight let us move to the next part the third insurance which is the health insurance now over here the structure is that a lot of these bigger developed countries have a publicly funded healthcare system so over there they are not not everybody takes a health insurance but in countries like india okay policy holders pay for the health insurance they pay for every year if there is an event like for example they have to go to hospital for treatment or medication the insurance company is going to pay but every year the premium is going to increase by default why because the healthcare cost is also going up so every year the premium is not going to save okay previously in india a lot of these healthcare insurance products 
if you are asking for a claim the premium would go up but right now that that has changed so your premium will not go up because there was a claim okay and also in some cases okay, you cannot deny the customer because of the pre-existing disease because in a lot of insurance product health insurance products in india also right now what they are doing is they are asking for a uh, buffer period so if you if i'm joining right now so in the first two three years the pre-existing disease is not covered okay this is what the basic types of health insurance let us move to the risk facing the insurance company the first major risk that we are going to be looking at insufficient fund to policy holder suppose there has been a claim from the policy holder and the company does not have sufficient amount of liquidity because in a very short period of time there was a huge catastrophe and lot of claim immediately came to us and we do not have sufficient amount of cushion to protect ourselves that is basically the insufficient fund part there is also a concept of concept of longevity risk a lot of customers have taken annuity product but they have lived a longer life and because of which my annuity payout is increasing that is a huge cost for me and i do not have liquidity amount liquidity left with me poor returns on investments when in lot of dip insurance product i'm giving guarantee to the customer that you will get this much amount of money so in such case i also have to invest into fixed income securities like bond okay where generally they try to invest into companies or sectors which where the risk is very low the default risk is very low but suppose there is any default or the returns that they were generating that was very low okay all of these things can impact the returns that the insurance companies that are expecting to generate on the portfolio and because of which they will not have money to pay to their customers also how do they try to tackle it they do diversification they will not invest into only one industry one geographical area variety of companies so that if one or two companies fail the entire portfolio is protected credit risk now what is what is exactly talking over here See, a lot of these insurance companies they deal with okay banks they deal with the reinsurance company this is very important reinsurance company because they will also take insurance the insurance company will take insurance from the insurance company okay now what is the creditor that they are facing so tomorrow okay there is a suppose insurance company like hdfc okay they have taken an insurance from uh, the reinsurance from genry or swiss re and hdfc company has paid to the customer but they are expecting some money from the reinsurance company they are not getting that money back that is a credit risk for us operation risk like we talked for a bank chapter every company which is operating they will face an operational risk because of people process system and external event there can be computer failure there can be human error there can be natural disaster because of which your operations is getting impacted the next entire part is calculations so i'm not touching it right away i'm directly moving forward break even premium again this is important from the exam perspective marking it as star I'm directly going towards the pnc insurance property and casualty insurance now over here what is happening so think from the perspective that what is the if i'm getting a hundred dollar of premium which is generated okay the first expense that i'm going to look at is the loss ratio suppose there is 100 dollar that i got and suppose out of that 65 dollar is the loss ratio part okay so how much amount is left 35 dollar what is my loss ratio it is nothing but the expense that i have to pay for all the claims that i'm getting okay so out of 100 dollars suppose 65 is the claim that claim is nothing but the loss ratio Okay, because as a company you have to make certain payout to the customers that is the loss ratio part okay how much is left 35 now the next is you also have to run a company right so they have an expense now expense can be for two parts okay the first is selling which is the brokerage commission then the rent and all of that salaries but also there is a loss adjustment part what is this loss adjustment this is important because the companies whenever there is a claim they will take steps to protect against uh, they will try to do an assessment of all of these things right uh, like whether the claim is genuine or not they will have to assess they will have to put some money that is nothing but loss adjustment part they will hire lawyers they will hire investigators that all that cost is coming over here okay that is the expense ratio so out of the 35 dollar that is left suppose i'm spending 10 more towards my expense so 65 percent was the loss ratio 10 percent was my expense ratio what is the amount left 25 okay if somebody asks me the next part what is the combined ratio combined ratio means taking both of them that means 75 percent is my combined ratio okay 75 percent is my combined ratio it's basically the sum of loss ratio and the 
expense ratio. Next is combined ratio after dividend. Now, over here, dividend is not for the shareholders, it is for the policyholders. A lot of these policyholders, they get some revenue that, they are, that the insurance company is going to generate. So they are also paid out. Okay, this is some percentage of the premium that they are charging. Say for example, out of the $25 that is remaining, suppose $5 is given as dividend. How much I am left with? 20. If somebody asks me what is the combined ratio after dividend, so it is going to be 75 and 5. 75 and 5. Okay, so from that perspective, it is going to be that part. Operating ratio. Operating ratio over here means combined ratio, okay, plus combined ratio less investment income as a percentage. Now, there is an investment income concept. Why? Because see, whatever amount that is left with me, I'm going to invest into market. So now I'll add, suppose I earn $2. So that is my investment income. Okay. That is my investment income because as a company, the inflow and the outflow of the money is not going to be on the same time. Okay. So there's going to be a mismatch with respect to the inflow and the outflow. Okay. The interest earned. Now, for example, policyholders, they tend to pay their premium upfront at the beginning of the year, but insurance companies generally they have to pay back at the end. Okay. So claim payout is generally going to be in the in the, at the end or in the middle so for they have some money for a certain period of time which they can utilize and earn income on that that is this part moral hazard when we talk about moral hazard section okay over here moral hazard means see i have taken an insurance my behavior has changed okay so i'm becoming more reckless so generally insurance companies what they do they take insurance uh, product and what they basically try to identify that uh, they behave more recklessly. So suppose I've taken a life insurance and now after taking life insurance, I'm doing scuba diving or skydiving because I know there is an insurance company which is going to protect me. Okay. An example of moral hazard, okay, is nothing but uh, collision and liability coverage, which basically means because I've taken an automobile insurance, now I'm, I'm driving recklessly. I'm or doing over speeding. Okay. Because I know if there is an accident, any damage to the company car, insurance company will be paying me. So I am not taking that stress. Another example would be after I've taken a life insurance, health insurance, I will try to request more health related services, which means I'll for a very small impact also, I'll directly go to the hospital. The next is method to mitigate moral hazard. How do, how do companies try to mitigate this? They will add deductible. What is deductible? Deductible is a simple concept means policy holders will have to pay the initial your sum amount suppose i've taken a policy in which there is a deductible of one lakh and my policy is around 10 lakhs so the first one lakh i will have to pay as a customer and above that the next 10 lakhs insurance company will pay now why they're adding this deductible because they want to make sure that the, in, the customer is not going to the hospital every now and then okay next is co-insurance now over here what is what they are what the insurance company is saying if you're if you're asking for a claim 70 percent will pay 30 percent you will have to pay that is co-insurance. You are also paying something. Policy limit. A lot of these health insurance companies, what they do is that they will fix up an amount, which indirectly means that if uh, if there is suppose a cancer detected in your uh, health, then I'll pay you maximum of 10 lakhs. So that's a limit that I've put that my exposure is only 10 lakhs. Next is what is adverse selection? Okay, while giving insurance, I did not bifurcate. I was not able to bifurcate properly between a good risk and a bad risk, which means somebody who had a he bad health, okay, who was a bad risk for me, I gave him the insurance at the same premium. So for example, I'm giving insurance to a careless driver or a sick individual. So these are bad risks for the customer. How do I mitigate this? Okay, how do I mitigate this? At the start itself, I'll do very, very strong due diligence. That means I'll ask him to give a lot of records, health records, I'll do checkup, everything. And also in a lot of cases, they will also keep on doing ongoing due diligence. That means they will ask the customer to do health checkups. They'll ask the customer to do driving records, all of these. Okay. Are you ready to ace the financial risk management exam? I know clearing FRM is tough and to ease out your journey for preparing for the exam, our crash course will help you. Because in our crash course, we have a concise and crisp content covering the entire Swedish book, everything given in the book. And this crash course will give you the edge pass the FRM exam. So don't miss out. Check out the link in the description. Okay, so we are back and we are going to be talking about the next section which is about the mortality and 
longevity risk. Now, what is mortality risk? Simply, it means customer is dying, okay, very fast, okay. So, mortality risk means suppose there was some illness, some disease, because of which lot of the customers are dying earlier than expected, okay. From the perspective of the insurance company, the risk is increasing. Why? Because suppose somebody has taken a term plan, my customer has taken a term plan and he is dying within that fixed period and because of which I will have to now pay out, okay. Because he is dying earlier than expected, my cost is going up. What is the next part? Longevity risk. Now in this case, suppose the customer is staying uh, longer than expected. So he is living longer than expected due to better health care or better uh, healthy lifestyles, all of this. Now where this is a problem? Annuity. Because in the annuity, I had given a confirmation to the customer, till the time you live, I'll keep on making payment to you. In that case, my loss is going to increase higher because I have to keep on paying to him till the time he dies. Right Now, there is a natural hedge in this. Why? Because as a company, if I'm giving both the uh, health insurance or basically term insurance and annuity, then there is a natural hedge. Why? Because look at this section. Suppose this is my term insurance and this is my annuity. Now, when we talk about mortality risk or when we talk about longevity risk, so what with, if I look at a particular product, mortality risk, yes, the term product will face mortality, but not long, longevity. Why? They will not face longevity risk. Why? Because the customer is, if the customer is able to stay longer, then as a company, I do not have to pay him the money because he's staying longer than the fixed term of the term plan. So they are not facing longevity risk, but they are facing a mortality risk. For an annuity company, okay, they do not want people to live longer. So they will they will not face mortality because if they if the customer die early, it is beneficial for the insurance company. But they are facing a, a longevity risk. Now think about an insurance company who is selling both term plan and annuity. So there is a natural hedge for them, okay, because longevity risk is bad for annuity, but good for life insurance business. Similarly, Ulta. Okay, mortality risk is bad for life insurance, but good for annuity. Okay, so they will try to offset, they will try to offset, okay, the lot of the impact which they are facing on both the sides. Okay, so longevity derivatives, okay, whatever risk is left when there is a natural edge, whatever risk is left, what we will be doing, we'll be taking reinsurance. Okay, whatever is a residual exposure, we'll take that reinsurance. Longevity derivatives are used to hedge Long, longevity risk. So if suppose I have given an annuity contract, I am facing a longevity risk, how do I offset? So I can enter into a longevity derivative, okay, which will help me to protect. Okay, suppose, suppose there is an annuity product. Suppose there is an annuity product and in this case, as a company I have given an annuity product. Okay, so if suppose longevity is happening, okay, then this is a risk for me which means I'll start facing loss. Okay. Now what I can do is I can enter into a longevity derivative, which should give me profit or income. If a lot of people are surviving, they're staying long, they're surviving longer period of, so this should offset my losses. That is what the core concept is. How do I do it? Okay, there is suppose longevity bond, which means in which the coupon is decided on the basis of how much percentage of people are surviving. So if more and more people survive from a population, my coupon will increase. So basically this extra income is going to cover to the loss which I'm facing with respect to the uh, cost which I'm facing for the annuity contract. Okay, now there is a, they have given you a formula, fixed mortality, actual mortality into principal part. Now this is an example of a derivative contract where what they are saying is, Suppose there is a fixed mortality rate minus actual mortality rate into principal, right? The payoff can be calculated as fixed mortality minus the actual into the principal. This is mortality means death. Now think about this. Suppose you assumed that the morta fixed mortality is around 5%. Okay. And in reality, a lot of people survived. So mortality rate will go down. Suppose it, it was only 2% from the population. So what is going to, suppose the principal was also $100 million. So now what is going to happen? I'll make 3% of the $100 million 
from the derivative the longevity derivative product okay so if there is lot of people who are surviving the annuity product i will face loss but simultaneously if i have taken a longevity derivative that is going to be beneficial for me okay it will help me to cover okay next is capital requirement for insurance companies very very simple generally not tested in the exam okay uh, solvency is the similar to what you see for basel in the insurance space so minimum capital requirement is kept under that section okay which means insurance companies the way banking banks have to follow basel norms insurance companies will have to follow the solvency norms over here okay so how do they keep capital so they have to they have given two norms two sections over here scr which is the solvency uh, related capital requirement and then mcr which is the minimum capital requirement if suppose the scr is 100 and 70 is the mcr which is the minimum if my capital is say around 90 then there is going to be a warning from the regulator if i am below the scr there is going to be a warning that please increase your capital if it goes below 70 then the insurance company will stop my activity they will say you cannot issue new insurance product okay generally what happens is the mcr is nothing but some 25 to 40% of the scr so if my scr is 100 my mcr would be around say 45 so i cannot go below 45 how do we decide how do regulators decide what should be the capital requirement for a particular company so they take into account three things what is investment risk because the premium that the insurance companies are getting they are getting invested in the market like okay, right so where they have made investment what is the credit risk what is the market risk that is the first component second underwriting risk when they are giving insurance how they are shortlisting the profile of the customer okay because these customers you will have to pay in the future this is my liability how the entire underwriting activity is happening and finally what is the operation risk all three of them will decide how much amount of capital that has to be kept for that particular section okay the substantially more equity capital for pnc why pnc because pnc business have more uncertainty because there can be sudden catastrophic event sudden earthquake sudden hurricane and you don't know how to tackle it so you'll have to keep good amount of equity capital as a buffer to protect against when you talk about insurance company they have very low amount of liquidity because their business is very predictable okay they only face challenge with respect to more and more people surviving or more and more people dying early okay but more or more or less the uncertainty is very very low in the life insurance business as compared to the pnc insurance business The next is guaranteed system for insurance companies now what is this guaranteed system over here basically the same thing that in this case uh, they are talking from the us perspective how the guarantee system work for insurance and how it is work for banking so insurance it is at the state level for banking it is at the federal level in us market federal means at the central level so what insurance companies have to do in their guarantee system if suppose tomorrow any insurance company defaults okay if any insurance company become insolvent then all the other insurance company they will contribute some amount because they have to pay to the customer of that sol insolvent company okay now how do we decide how much peep some uh, the insurance company is going to contribute it will be based on how much income you are generating from that particular state because in us it is united states okay so there are, the rules are different for different different states okay so everybody will con contribute some proceed and that will be treated as a guaranteed fund okay for the uh, customers which who are uh, customers of that insolvent company but this is only triggered when the insurance company fails okay the limit can be applied to claim and there there may be delay in settlement because it is going to trigger after the insurance company has become solvent insolvent the entire process might take a lot of time there might be delay in settlement of money to the policy holder when we talk about federal structure of banks so what is going to happen the moment you get a license of banking you have to contribute to the permanent fund what is this permanent fund it has been it are taken to protect the depositors if tomorrow the bank defaults the the, the depositors have to be protected there is a permanent fund and also there is there is an insurance from the federal deposit insurance corporation okay such kind of permanent fund is not available for insurance company because it is only managed at the state level and the trigger is after the insolvency in this case it is at the start itself the next is the pension fund this was the second part of the chapter now over here what is happening uh, pension fund products are been taken by companies to facilitate the employees okay in terms of when they are going to stay in the company 
okay after some period of time they will be paid a periodic amount they will be paid a periodic pension till the time they die now there are two major products over here the first is defined benefit plan from the name itself defined benefit so employee knows how much amount of money he is going to get but employer's contribution is not known this is important okay now why this is not known because what is going to happen okay as a part of pension employee will receive a fixed retirement pension that is calculated as some percentage this part is not important this two line is not important why because they are talking about you the calculation of the pension which is not generally tested in the exam the main focus is on how it is a risk for the employer because what is going to happen now because the employee knows he is going to get some x amount of money employer has to make sure that it is available how do we do it okay we calculate the present value of all the obligation that might happen in the future and employers what they are simply doing is at the start okay they will create a pool in this pool employee will also contribute okay and this pool is invested into market okay simultaneously what what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the present value of liabilities what are these liabilities in future we have to pay pension so i'll take the present value of all the liability okay now if suppose my present value of liability is around 100 and this value of this pool is 90 which is lesser so what will happen now the employer will come and will fund the gap that means 10 dollar he will fund fund if tomorrow the pool is much lower the employer will have to contribute more now over here what is the uncertainty employer is not sure how much he will have to contribute okay because the contribution depends upon what is the difference between the present value of the liability and the market value of the pool which is invested in the market okay that is the major part okay now in this case when you are calculating present value it is highly sensitive to what is the discount rate that you are taking generally they take a treasury rate and they use for discounting okay also a lot of these products they have indexation benefit which means initially the amount of pension which is given to the customer uh, the employee is lower and as he ages the cost of living is also going to increase so pension amount will also increase okay also this means it accounts for inflation other variation of in, in this could be that i am giving you the pension but if suppose you die your spouse your surviving spouse will get slightly higher lower amount of pension but he she will or he will get the spouse will get some amount so it, the cost for the company is also very high the second variation over here is defined contribution plan in this case the contribution of the employer is known very clear he has no confusion but employee is not sure how much amount he is going to get now in this case what happens so for each customer okay employee number one for each customer they will have an account okay in which employee is also going to contribute and the employer is also going to contribute both they will put in now what is effectively going to happen is that the dollar amount is there and this dollar amount is invested in the market if this dollar amount is higher at the end the employee will get a higher amount if this amount is lower he'll get a lower amount so now in this case the employer is very sure at the start how much i have to contribute there is no uncertainty for me if the market perform well if the pool if the account in amount invested is performing well you'll get a slightly higher amount if it is not investing well you'll get a lower amount okay that is what is happening so both employer and employee contributes okay and upon retirement the employee receives a amount which which can be converted into pension and some portion can be converted into an annuity and a lump sum amount so either you can get the entire amount as a part of the pension month on month or you can get a lump sum plus an annuity amount major part is there is no risk for the employer because he knows how much i have to contribute okay because his contribution is fixed there's no obligation the risk is faced by the employee because if the pool if that amount is not performing in the market he will not get a good amount so at a very uh, broader level when you talk about defined contribution plan which was the, the last plan the every individual customer or every individual employee will have his own individual account the way you have employee provident fund scheme okay so individual pension is on the basis of the amount in the fund and how it is growing but when we talk about defined benefit plan it's a pool for everybody that is where there is a lot of uncertainty how much contribution the employer will have to take it's a one pooled account okay so i hope you you guys are good with this concept of this insurance chapter we have completed this chapter from the exam perspective i have also kept on highlighting important parts 
section okay